Welcome to Focus on Scholarship. I'm Carrie Cooper, Dean of Libraries, and your host for today's session. The Graduate School and the Library have a shared goal of bringing focus and awareness to the exciting scholarly and creative achievements of the academic community. Our guest today is Dr. John Bowes, Assistant Professor in Eastern Kentucky University's Department of History. Dr. Bowes joined Eastern's faculty in 2006, received a bachelor's degree in history from Yale University, and completed both his master's degree and PhD in history at the University of California at Los Angeles. He spent two years as the Andrew W. Mellon Postdoctoral Fellow in Native American Studies at Dartmouth College. He is the author of four books, The Trail of Tears, Removal in the South, Black Hawk and the War of 1832, Removal in the North, Exiles and Pioneers, and the soon to be published, The Choctaw. He recently received an NEH summer stipend to support research for his fifth book, Northern Indian Removal and Unfamiliar History. Welcome. Thank you very much. Talk about how you developed an interest in Native Americans and why you've continued to write and study them. Well, it's uh, an interest that, it, that has always been with me to some degree, but it, it really is something that when I entered graduate school at UCLA, um, became a, a passion. Um, and a lot of it was because of uh, my advisor, uh, uh, Professor Will Melissa Meyer, uh, who herself uh, did Native American history at UCLA, and talking to her, taking classes with her, and, and really recognizing the type of research um, that was being done in Native American history, especially in the late 90s and, and coming into to the 21st century, is just a, a wide open field and very interesting field to, to work in. Great, great. Um, you, you talk a lot about your mentors um, from UCLA and Dartmouth, and you just mentioned one of them. Talk about um, how they taught you to be a good scholar. What is a good scholar in your mind? It's, it's a good question because I, the, there, there are three main people who, who really kind of mentored me and, and, and helped me become who, who I am and who I'm still becoming in many ways as, as a scholar. Uh, Melissa. Uh, just constantly taught me to think of, of, of who I was studying, uh, how I was studying uh, the, the, the research, and, and think of the people involved, um, and, and really kind of the human element to, mm -hmm. to history and the study of history, as well as, as being very thorough um, in, in your research. Um, Steve Aaron, who is another close advisor and mentor of mine at UCLA, um, was always on me about um, the, the telling of, of, of the story and, and, and coming up with a, a good, smooth narration and an interesting narration. He was the one I, I mentioned in, in the acknowledgments of, uh, of my book, Exiles and Pioneers, who told me uh, that one of my first drafts of my dissertation was uh, mind-numbing. Um, which is a little harsh to hear, <laughs> yeah. but is also a good way of, of really kind of getting across. You need it's not just about delivering facts; it's about telling a story. Um, and then uh, Colin Calloway at, at Dartmouth uh, was just a phenomenal mentor, and and again kind of engaged the human element uh, in, in telling me that he's uh, he always finds it difficult uh, to think of a historian telling a, a story who who does not have children themselves since history and you're talking about people, you're talking about families and, and children are you know, at the center of that in, in many ways. So in a variety of kind of really human elements, I think they all um, helped mold me. Great, great. Exiles and Pioneers, Eastern Indians in the Trans-Mississippi began as your dissertation at UCLA. Mm -hmm. um, talk about the process of turning a dissertation into a book. It's a long one, um, but I think the, the, the most important thing is that for a dissertation, a dissertation is, is a tool. Um, you're trying to prove to this select group of people that, that you belong in, in, in academia, that, that you've done the research, that you can put it all together, that you have an argument, that you proved your argument. And so in many ways, a dissertation ends up being um, a vast collection of your research where you're saying, look at all I found, um, and then when you try and turn that into a book, you have to realize that you don't need to include everything, mm -hmm. that you need to include what's important, you need to include what kind of moves the story along. Um, and so, for instance, my dissertation um, included a vast amount of material on seven different Indian tribes, and, and the final book uh, ended up just focusing on four because it just made a lot more sense to the, to the story I was, I was looking to tell. Um, so it was much more streamlined in, in the way it, it was put together. That would be such good advice for the graduate students at Eastern Kentucky University and all others who aspire to have their dissertation be a book. 
here. That was that's good advice. Yeah, no, it's it's there's a lot you can do with footnotes in the book as opposed to <laughs> sure, sure. Um, congratulations on your National Endowment for the Humanities Summer Stipend Award. Thank you. It's quite an accomplishment. You. Your award um, was designated as a We Are the People project. Can you tell us about the project in your current research? Certainly. Uh, the, the project that I'm currently working on is in many ways kind of a prequel to what my dissertation was about where um, Exiles and Pioneers talks about post-Indian removal and now I'm, I'm looking to take a step back and really seeing how removal itself played out. Um, so it's taking a much closer look at uh, Indians living, who are living north of, primarily north of the Ohio River, western Great Lakes region, um, a story that really hasn't been dealt with in any significant way. There's a lot of emphasis on southeastern removal on the Cherokees and so this is trying to, as I say, an unfamiliar history, you know, trying to bring to light this, this area that is um, not as has not been as emphasized in uh, in, in contemporary scholarship, uh, and with the NEH grant, this what's what's nice is, is is an award like that at least tells me that there are people out there who think that what I'm doing has some merit. It's sure. always nice to get that um, kind of outside affirmation, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the, the designation of it as a We the People project also means that um, there's a sense that that this could help to kind of further develop kind of a, the, the more public areas of, of Native American history um, and, and really kind of the ways in which it um, interweaves with our, our national narrative. Excellent, thank you. You are working um, on a third book being published by Chelsea House, The Choctaw. The series is marketed for high school students, which I can appreciate as a former high school librarian. It's wonderful mm -hmm. to see high quality nonfiction books out there. What have you enjoyed most about researching and writing for this series? It's a very different type of writing. I mean, and one of the things that, that I do enjoy about it immensely is, is it requires you know similar amounts of, of research and, and knowledge of the material, but it's how do you take that material and, and present it in a form that, that students are, um, and high school students in particular, are going to, to find accessible. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not just about kind of the, the language, um, you know, trying to make sure you don't write, you know, 400 word long sentences things of that nature but it but it's really about you know providing them with ideas that they can that they can hold on to um, you know you know making sure that that the story itself is both accessible and, and interesting and so um, the, the three books that I've written for Chelsea House I think have really improved my writing um, because it has forced me to, to synthesize my ideas in a different way sure um, and and so that, uh, I think, has been, for me, one of the, 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 the best aspects of, of working on those, those kind of materials is it's a different, different type of writing, different type of thinking that, that, that has only you know, improved my ability to, uh, to present that, that type of history. How does your research and your scholarship change or impact your teaching? In substantial ways, I mean, it's it, it's easy to fall into um, a rut um, when when teaching, um, whether you're teaching just kind of a basic survey or you're teaching even classes in your own interest, because you you know what you know and you, here's you, how you're going to present it. Um, but it by writing these kinds of books, by doing that kind of research, I'm constantly updating my own knowledge of this material, constantly getting a sense of how other scholars are looking at um, events that I feel like I'm already familiar with, but you know, often find that I, I don't know everything amazingly enough. <laughs> um, and, and as well with the, the Chelsea House books, again, I mean, part of what that um, not only improved my writing, but, but thinking about different ways of presenting this material in the classroom, again, to make it more accessible, because it's much harder it's much harder for me to teach something I know very well uh, because I don't want to generalize. I want to get every little bit of information out there uh, and that doesn't really work in the classroom. And so kind of thinking about how to synthesize things differently for writing accessibility also really makes me think about what are, what are the ways to make this information and these ideas more accessible to students in the classroom. Um, so I think it, it not just content knowledge, but presentation knowledge um, translates directly into, into teaching from, uh, from this kind of work. Well, I really appreciate you spending time with me today and talking about your research. Oh, this, is, this has been great. Thank you very much. That's it for this edition of Focus on Scholarship. I'd like to thank our guest, John Bowes. You can find copies of Dr. Bowes' books in the main library and in the university archives with other important publications by our faculty and staff. 
Please join us next time as we continue to raise awareness and celebrate the scholarly and creative achievements of Eastern Kentucky University's faculty and staff.